Lord, today we pray you usher in, God, Lord, a great move of your spirit. Father, we believe you that, God, you will blow, God, your divine wind in all corners of this place, God, Lord. Touch every single life, every person. Touch every family in this place here today. Touch everyone who is watching online. Let them receive something from you which is so unmistakable. We give you thanks. We bless you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, would you give God a praise offering as Brother Chihuahua comes and take over? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, before we start the, the praise, I'd like to read something from um, 1 Samuel chapter 3, 0, verse 7. And no, it says that David encouraged himself with God. Right, sometimes we feel that as a Christian all the day long, you feel happy, you feel victorious. But no, right? Some of you wake up this morning, or some, especially some people on Monday, they find it very hard to praise the Lord. You feel tired, you feel exhausted, or times you feel very strained, strained, right? I think it's time that God is telling us, I think, through what Pastor shared. In spite of all this, we want to praise the Lord, amen? We want to say, God, here we are, Lord. God, we want to sing as a declaration. We want to shout out to you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everything that everything that has breath that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I praise in the valley. I praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. I praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm number. I praise when surrounded. I'm praise as the waters. My enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I have a reason to pray.
Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise, I praise cause your soul. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? I praise the Lord, oh my soul. I praise the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah, God, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, all that's within us, Lord. We praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. God, in spite of anything, God, we choose to praise you, God. God, in spite of everything we're feeling this morning, whether we're lethargic, we're tired, or God, we feel we don't. God, we know, God, because you move the mountains, God. We declare you are able to move the mountains, you're able to steal the wind and waves. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but every time when my legs sprang from feeling down, it's time to even seek God and begin to pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To say, Lord, here we are. God, we want to connect with you, Jesus. God, we want to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Hallelujah. God, no other place, Lord. Hallelujah. No matter what we find on Google, Reddit, or at ChatGPT, how to solve our issues or problems, God, that's not the way, Lord. The only way is through you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, you're able, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're the truth, Lord. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your outliving hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted. Of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is silent. Your presence, Lord. Let's invite the Spirit of God here. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. and view the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Lord sing it to the Lord that's nothing There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord, I've tasted and seen. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves, when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone, your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come fly. Oh, 
presence of God is there reverse Halloween. It's true our Christian world that it's part of our training that we learn to recognize the action of the Lord. We learn to recognize when God speaks to us, Hallelujah. When God speaks to us through a vision, a dream, even the audible voice, it's time that we learn to tune to the voice of Jesus. Amen. Let us become more aware your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and view the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I ask long for to be overcome by your presence, God. By your presence, God overcome by your presence your presence Jesus to be overcome by your presence to be overcome by your presence your presence Lord your presence Lord your presence your presence Hallelujah. Let's express our love to God even in our prayer language, whether in tongues, in English or Chinese or any language that you're comfortable with. Say, God, here we are, Lord Jesus. Here we are, God. Here we are, Jesus. God, we just want God to connect with you, God. God, to be in your presence, God. To be changed, to hear your voice, Jesus. However it might be, whether we're standing, we're kneeling, we're sitting, hallelujah. God, we just, God, want to connect or feel your presence, God. Be aware of the power of Jesus. <clears throat> hallelujah. Shalabah Jesus, Jesus. Shalabah Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's many times in my life I pray very long for something, but God doesn't answer it. 
but it's through the moment when we connect with Jesus when God says yes and that's where faith is released hallelujah and you know in your spirit when God says yes to the answer not because of how long we pray not belong not because of how long we sweat it out but when God say yes when the gift of faith begin to operate in this place hallelujah when God begins to operate that supersede every prayer supersede every one supersede everything that we're concerned about when God say yes hallelujah will this be a yes moment with you with Jesus hallelujah as the musician play let's sing God here we are God to listen to you Lord I know silence and prayer is the worst thing to bear but that's when God speaks up Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. Living, yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. This is all. Bodies are still being raised. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being saved. God, we believe it. Yes, you can see that. Wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. We are here. This is the move. 
This is a move. Let's declare this. Miracles happen when Jesus moves. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. Miracles happen. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. Miracles happen, Lord. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. Let's take care of the last time. Miracles. Miracles happen. Miracles happen. Healing is, is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming. This is the move. This is the move. This is the move. This is the move. For you, Lord, we are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set up us for you. Come and do. Move of God, this is the move. This is the move. This is the move. Hallelujah, God. This is a move. Hallelujah. Thank you, this Jesus. Won't you just give God praise because He intends. This is the move. He is moving in our midst. The Jesus of the this Bible. The same God was there who spoke the earth of the creation. That same God who made each one of us from the dust of the earth. That same Jesus is moving in our midst. He is mighty to save. He's mighty to heal. He's mighty to deliver. His miracles are in this place. If you and I have faith in the Lord, if you believe in God, would you reach out with all of your heart and say, I believe Jesus. I believe in your healing. I believe in your miracles. I believe in the work that you want to do in my life today, Jesus. God, I believe, I believe, I believe. Would you just tell the Lord that I believe in what you want to do in my life, Jesus. How you reach me out, God, Lord, from the miry clay. You set me on a rock, Jesus. I believe you. I believe you are able. You are the king. You are the master. You are the healer. You are the deliverer. You are the miracle-working God. I believe you, Jesus. You are my father. I believe you, Jesus. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to come, Lord. Overcome us, Jesus. God, help us to be overcome by your presence. God, we know, we know your presence is here, Jesus. God, I pray that the hearts are hard and if we are far from you, if we are feeling nothing about you, Jesus. Today, God, would you overcome us, God? Would something come upon us right here today? Let the power of your spirit as we reach out to you, God, as we pray, God, Lord, I pray from heaven's winds will blow. And I pray, God, Lord, shake us out of our slumber. And I pray, God, a life. Oh God, your life come upon us now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, captivate us. I pray, God, Lord, the awareness of your presence will be so clear, God. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. And if you're thankful for what the Lord does, would you give Jesus a praise offering? Would you bless him? Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord offers his presence every day for us. If you're here, you want to touch the presence of God. You must want to be overcome by His presence. That's what we sang, overcome by His presence. That means sometime when the presence of God is there, you might just have to let your hand up. 
and open all of your heart and just call out to him that's what you need to do it's about saying god i need you and you know what when you say god knows everything god knows our heart but there is a way that we respond based on scripture we call out to jesus we do whatever our breath can do thank god for strength that we have here today and god gives us strength god gives us voice god gives us the ability to raise our hands so we can reach out to him indicate that say jesus i need you and god wants to overcome us with his presence if you believe that give god one more praise offering would you bless him amen god you're so good thank you jesus Amen. Welcome once again to the house of the Lord. We're so glad that you can be with us. Would you find a couple of people? Would you warmly welcome them? Glad you can be here. Children, you can be dismissed. Kids Alive, you can get on to your Kids Alive program. Hallelujah. Reach out. Welcome somebody. Amen. Those of you who are watching online, we welcome you warmly in Jesus' name. Thank you for being part of our service and joining us online. The Lord bless you. Amen. It is awesome. Children get to their Sunday school or Kids Alive program. Once again, I want to say thank you to all those who are volunteering, those who help us with our Kids Alive program. Aren't you glad for them? The hours, the dedication, all the craft work you saw outside doing stuff so that our children can be blessed they can get a touch of the lord amen praise god we appreciate our kids alive team greatly appreciate our worship team and everybody who helps out not just those who are in front we thank god for each one of them also those helping with projection sound and everything to make this service possible thank the lord thank god for the ushers who help us guide us in make sure there's order in the house we thank everybody who volunteers thank you the lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A couple of announcements as we get to have a great service. We're going to open our heart to receive what the Lord has for us here today. Just some quick announcements. Uh, we have equip meetings. We're getting back to it this Wednesday. Equip meetings are part of our program to help each person at Alive Me Church. You know, we've got a Alive acronym. God wants everybody here in this church to be alive. That's our plan, that's our vision, that's our goal. And part of a life, the E stands for equipping everybody. We want everybody to be equipped. Everybody say, be equipped. And uh, we're going through a series of Bible studies at this point of time. That's part of our life progression. You know, those of you who are familiar with me, we've got a pathway, a life basics, a life progression, a life commission. And this is part of our life progression that we do this Bible study series called Elements. And uh, this segment we're dealing with uh, relational issues. So I want to encourage those of you who want to join in, just join in. You don't have to have signed up for it. You don't have to uh, have any private background. Just get online on Wednesday, uh, 8 p.m. It'll be a good time. If you want to purchase some of the Bible study material, you can also do that. Just scan the QR code. We have the material with us. Amen. Thank God for all the programs we run. One of the things that we run in church, our cell groups, and this year, I want to be very clear to say to all of us, we want to be a part of a cell group and, and commit to that cell group for this year. And I want to just watch a quick video. Uh, there's a cell group. Different cell groups do different things. Some cell groups focus on what we call discipleship groups. They help to build people. Last week you heard Brother Lewis. And that's really a discipleship group. They teach you Bible study and you get there and they try to build you up and they go through a program called Living Logos. The other cells which really focus a lot more on, on fellowship and, and this particular one is a lot more of a fellowship group. Let's watch Kenan.
Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Uh, if you're not part of a cell already, I want to encourage you to be a part of a cell. And uh, this Canaan cell, one of the things that we do is we make it very possible for parents with young children. It's a little different Different if you're different life stages. If you've got younger children, it's sometimes very hard to have a proper Bible study on a, on a Saturday evening when the children are going crazy everywhere. And uh, so this cell tries to do it in ways which make it possible. Amen. You need different kind of cell groups to help different groups of people. So this is a cell that we have, great place of community. But you know what? Lots of cells. If you want to be a part of a cell, please let Brother Amos. Where is Brother Amos? Right there. He's disappeared just now, but you can find him. He's there. And uh, you can let him know because we want to connect you to great places so that people can be a part of it. Amen. Um, But the Zensia, as you, many of you know, we've been praying for his health and uh, is going through a difficult time with cancer. Uh, he's based in San Francisco. Would you just pray a prayer blessing? Many of you have seen uh, him before, met him, been personally impacted by his ministry. Let's pray a prayer of healing. Let's pray the Lord would heal Brother Zensia, that God would touch him, help his family this season. Lord, you are a healer. You are the one who comes alongside us to help us. You're the one, God, Lord, who gives us strength, Jesus. And God, we pray for Brother Zen. God, we thank you for his ministry. Thank you for how he has helped people all over the world. God, Lord, how, he, God, you've given him a burden, a testimony to share. And God, how he has made such an impact. We pray today that, God, you help him in this situation where his body is seemingly in such a terrible state. But, God, you're the healer. We thank you for what you went through on Pilate's whipping post. You took every stripe upon your back for our healing and health. We claim that healing. We claim a miracle for Brother Zensia in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray, God, you help your people to help and bless man of God in this season. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to give an offering from the Zensia, you can help to give that. Just take note of his name, X-E-N-N, -N, and just make sure when you uh, give your offerings, uh, you can specify some of that from the Zensia. Uh, we have a slide for offerings this morning. We want to give to God, and uh, if you're giving uh, to help the Zensia, just put that on the remarks column but let's give to god we want to give to bless our work of missions bless the work of this local church god gives us the power to make wealth so we can be a blessing amen father thank you for providing for your people god you have been so good to us god you've allowed us to be a blessing to the nations and now god as we give to your purpose i pray you look down from heaven see the gifts of your people and God, I pray based on your word, bring prosperity, bring breakthroughs, bring open doors, God. Let your people see well that you bring, God. Nobody else can bring that well. Only you can do it, Jesus. We pray, God, Lord, for your people, their jobs. We pray, God, Lord, let their jobs see the supernatural touch from heaven. That, God, you're freeing up their time so that they can do the work of God. But yet, keep going up and keep growing and keep being used, God, Lord. Keep continue to, to be successful in their workplace. We believe you for this, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen. Won't you stand? Let's give. Uh, the brown envelope is, if you want to give to Brother Zensia and bless him. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and to worship the Lord again. Amen. We're going to continue to declare the goodness of God, the power of God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. God still moved the mountains. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, Jesus. You moved the mountains, Lord. I moved the mountains. Told the wind and wave be still. Cast out demons. 
so be filled. Now there's breakthrough. Now there's freedom in your name. Gave us power and the keys to do the same. Oh, redemption. Make accusers drop their stones. Show us mercy with your mighty miracles. Now there's breakthrough. Now there's freedom in your name. Gave us power and the keys to do the same. Now we proclaim. Church, yeah, I think they can. Alive from the church, we are alive in Christ. Okay, in a live community church, we are alive in Christ. Amen? Amen. So turn to your neighbor and ask them, Are you alive in Christ? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, as you're still standing, let us. Uh, read the Word of God. Um, if you have your Bible with you, I would like to invite you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 to 9. I do want to give honor uh, to Pastor and the First Lady. I want to give honor to my, uh, my wife and my mother-in-law and my family. Amen. All right. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 to 9. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believe. As the Lord gave to each one, I planted, 
Apollo's water. But God gave the increase. Everyone say increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. Everyone say fellow workers. You are God's few, you are God's building. I'd like to share with you this morning on the subject, working with God, working with God. Let us all lift our voice and pray. Heavenly Father, right now we come before you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Father, that we're able to gather here to magnify your name, Lord Father, to worship you, Lord. Even right now, Lord Father, we invite you, Lord Father, to come in our midst, Lord Father, that you will speak to your people, Lord Father. Anoint these lips of clay and anoint those to listen, Lord Father, that we will all be built by you, Lord Father. We thank you once again, Lord Father, that we have the privilege to work with you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Before you sit there, tell your neighbor once again, alive in Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. In other words, apart from Christ, we don't really live a life. So you want to be alive, you need to be in Christ. Amen. So you want to be alive, you come to a live community church. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, I want to share with you on working with God. Uh, there is a distinction between working for and working with. Um, when we work for someone, it's very much like a transaction. Uh, I, I think if you're blessed, you're doing a job that you enjoy. Uh, but in most cases, that may not necessarily you know, be the case. And, and in most cases when you work for someone, it's hard to have a long-lasting motivation. And for some, we work for a salary. For some, this is our passion. That's why we are, we are working in that place. So when I say it's a transaction, because there are job description, there are expectation, there are deadline, and all this can be very stressful. So basically, working for someone, you know, it's complicated. Now, I'm not suggesting that you know, we all quit our job. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, you know, sometimes our expectations are not made clear or are not uh, unrealistic. And sometimes you have employers that are like slave driver and uh, manipulative. And of course, on the other hand, uh, you can have employee that is either and act like a boss. So it's work both ways. So it's complicated, it's difficult. But working with God is very different. You see, although God is over us, He's Lord over our life, we submit ourselves to Him, He's our protection, He's our refuge, He's our provider, He's our peace. Uh, but God prefers to work alongside with us. It is an honour. So working with God is not limiting ourselves only serving in the church or working in the church. Even you're working a secular job, you can work with God. Amen. And working with God will make things less miserable <laughs> if you compare that working for someone. So I'm not here belittling any employer or any company, but just trying to help us understand that there is a distinction between working for and working with. So it is a will of God to work with us. So go back to the text that we just read in 1 Corinthians. So the city of Corinth is a port city. It's a wealthy place. It's a city that is uh, diversified with different culture. So it's a place of trading, of commerce. And of course, Corinth is also known as a place that is immoral. So the, the, the passage of scripture that we just read, uh, the church in Corinth is very divided. So you could see there are different camps in the church. Some say, you know, I I'm, I'm belongs to Apollo. Some say I am uh, for Paul. And some say I'm for Peter. And some say, well, I'm for Christ. But it is important for us to understand that 
regardless uh, what you call yourself, it is the will of God to work with us. And what the scripture that we just read reminded us one very important truth. Okay, you talk about planting, right? You see, when working with God, some of us, we play the role of planting. And everyone say work. work. There is a lot of work when talk about planting. And some is sowing, some is planting, and some is uh, watering. Once again, say with me, work. work. There is lots of work, right? And a lot of time, we would definitely want to be the one that harvests. I want to be the one that takes credit. I want to see results. I think we live in a world that is very result-orientated. And I remember a few months ago, I preached a message about we are called to multiply. We are called to increase. But nevertheless, allow me to explain and elaborate. Yes, we are called to multiply. We are called to increase. That is built in us. That is, uh, we are, the first commandment that God has given to mankind is to be fruitful and multiply. So we are created in the image and likeness of God. So we have the capacity to increase and multiply. But nevertheless, when we work with God, my objective, our objective, is not increase. Now, let, let me repeat. Our objective is not about increase. Because increase and multiplication will take place naturally. Our objective is follow the leading of our master, to follow the leading of God. And that's why sometimes in ministry, we can be very discouraged and disappointed because we could not see uh, the intended results. We want to see that increase. We have labored so much. We have served a lot for so many years, but we are not seeing results. But let us be reminded, God is the one that gave the increase. Amen? Amen? Let us praise the Lord once again. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Let me also remind you, the increase of the multiplication or the result is not determined by how hard you work. You can work very hard, day and night. Behind the scene. Under the limelight, I'm working very hard for the Lord. But regardless, that is not, that will not determine the result. That will not determine whether you will have the increase that the Lord has promised. But of course, I think every one of us interpret multiplication and increase differently. Uh, the intended increase that we have a lot of time is visible. A lot of time is, is glamorous. But there are different types of increase. And most importantly, is our increase that God will form in us. Jesus will form in us. Amen? That we are so full of Him. Amen? And that is the number one and most important increase that is intended by God. That we will be more like Him. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and tell him, we must be more like him. I remember once uh, Bishop Mark Morgan, he made a statement. Salvation will cost us nothing, but Christianity will cost you everything. Salvation <laughs> costs you nothing, but Christianity will cost you everything. Uh, wow, that was in my mind, and I would, I would start digesting and I felt, I think it's very easy to understand in a way when we look at the statement itself. Well, we are saved by grace through faith. It is the grace of God. It is not by our merit what we have done, but it's because God loved us. That's why He paid the price of sin and died for us at the cross so that we can be redeemed and so that we can have salvation. Amen? So that is the grace of God. So the grace of God, when we are born again in Christ, that put us, put us in, on the path of life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth to life. Amen? So when we receive salvation, when we are born again, we are on that pathway to that promised life. Amen? 
But for us to reach that destiny of abundant and eternal life, it requires us to give out our life. To give out our life. To be a Christian will cost you everything. Then to your neighbor, are you ready to pay the price? It's going to cost you everything. There's no discount, all right? That is going to cost you everything. But for you to have that promise, that fullness of life, you need to be willing to give out anything, everything. So until and unless we give out everything, we could, then we could receive that promised life. So Christianity will cost us everything. So the key here is working with God is about, you know, what is our foundation? What is our motive? What is our objective? So as I mentioned earlier on, it's more than just increase, but simply to follow the master, to do what he asks you to do. So I think we're living in a developed country like Singapore. Uh, we are very result-orientated. We want everything to spell out clearly, you know, and that's nothing wrong. I think to be effective, uh, to be productive, well, you, you need to spell out all the expectations, deadline, etc. But working with God, we need to change our mindsets. You need to follow the leading, just as the Lord led the children of Israel in the wilderness. So we need to constantly be aware, be alert, and follow Him. Be sensitive to his calling and leading. Uh, I'd like to bring your attention uh, to a few portions of scripture that help us understand on the other side about working with God. Let us turn to uh, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, verse 2 to 6. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. So the blind see and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended. Now, to work with God, you must be prepared. Like what Jesus' message to John the Baptist, blessed is he who is not offended. So you want to work with someone, you must not be easily offended by that person that you work with. So let us look at the life of John the Baptist. I mean, the ministry of John the Baptist is to prepare the, way, prepare the way of the Lord. And he had done so much. In fact, the scripture tells us he's the greatest man ever lived. But now he is in prison. I mean, his tomorrow is still a question mark. He's going to lose his life any time. But he, he, you could see the, in, in that communication, in that conversation, I think, John was very, very discouraged, was very stressed. He was very disappointed. Did you see what I do, Lord? I've done so much for you. Why, why are you not coming to rescue me? And to me, when I just look at the scripture on itself, on paper, to me, wow, I think Jesus is being very insensitive. Someone is already, uh, I mean, John was already so discouraged and you send a message back to John and tell them, tell John what you saw. The dead resurrected. The lame could walk. The blind could see. How would John feel? Are you kidding me? Are you that right person? Are you really that Messiah that, that I preach about? Why, I, I've done so much for you. Why have you left me and forsake me? Could, could you see my suffering? Could you not know the situation and the condition I'm in right now? 
And now you are telling me you are doing all these things for others. Am I supposed to be your beloved, your, your faithful disciple? But you are not doing anything for me, but you are doing that for all the people out there. Basically, what Jesus is trying to bring across to John the Baptist is, look here, John, it's not about you. It's all about the kingdom. My purpose, my ministry here is to deliver, to heal. So this is happening. Even though you are suffering, even though you are not seeing the visible increase in your own ministry, but in fact, it's not the case. You see, it's still happening. We're having multiplication. We're having revival out there. Even though you're bounded in prison. And of course, the last statement, which is what I'm trying to bring across this morning. Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. You see, it's a bigger picture. It's more than what we are going through. Amen. So I think this is something that we need to ask ourselves. Are we ready? Then let's look at another example in the Old Testament. First uh, King chapter 19, verse 10. First King chapter 19, verse 10. So we are looking at Elijah. So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenants, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. So prior to chapter 19, if you read in, in, in the whole context in chapter 18, God has used Elijah, the prophet Elijah, to deliver the children of Israel. He has killed 450 of the false prophets. And the next chapter is running for his life. So he's faced with persecution, intimidation from Zezebel. So I want you to pay attention. You see, the life, the ministry of Elijah and the ministry of John the Baptist, they are identical. So basically, they are preparing the way of the Messiah. They preach repentance. They prepare the people to receive the Messiah. But likewise, you could see both of them, their suffering is also very much identical. Now they are into a what? Self-pity. Self-pity. You know, we, we sang earlier on in that song that we are supposed to have victory. Amen? Victory in Christ. God promi promised us that we can be more than conqueror. Amen? Amen? Turn to your neighbor and tell them, we can have victory in Christ. But for you to be victorious, there are times we need to be first become a victim. But from a victim to be victorious, you need to not stay as a victim mindset. Self-pity is a victim mindset. Oh, of course, when you are victimized by others, you feel sorry for yourself. But don't stay there so long. Because with that victim mindset, you could not be victorious. So you, 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 look at, you look at John the Baptist, you look at Elijah. You see, Elijah, Elijah said, I have been very zealous to work with God. Correct? That is an honest and true statement. But the, this, uh, and the next thing, what did he say? For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. That is also true. And then he said that uh, they have killed your prophets, they have uh, tear down the, tore down the altars. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. That part is wrong. I'm alone. I, I want everyone to pat at your own hearts. Speak to yourself now. Don't overrate yourself. Don't overrate Caleb. Don't overrate myself. Don't overrate yourself. Yes, you know, e Elijah, you did a great job. God have used you, did mighty work. But the scripture, how did God respond to that? God told Elijah, I have kept 7,000 men, 7,000 prophets that did not bow down to 
ball. Praise the Lord. You, you see, sometimes in ministry, we have done so much for the Lord. And we just feel that we are the only one working. Once again, talk to yourself. Don't overrate myself. You are not the only one doing the job. There are many people behind the scene. Amen? There are many people serving God. Hallelujah! So it's not about me. It's not about you. It's working with God. It's about His agenda. I understand. We, we, we want to have, we want to see result, we want to have reward, we want to have some encouragement, the pat on the shoulder. I understand that. But before, we need to have a right attitude. God is all about you. Working with God to fulfill His agenda. And what is God's agenda? You see, it is the will of God. God is pleased to bless you. God promised us abundant life. God promised us eternal life. Regardless of all the difficulties and opposition we may face in life, we can have that peace. We can have that hope. We can have that expected uh, ending. Amen? So, it is not the desire of God that we suffer, but in life we do suffer. And we suffer does not mean that it is the will of God because life is very complicated. Uh, turn to your neighbor and tell them, I can be complicated. When you turn around, your, turn, turn around yourself, you could see they're more than you, right? Because they're more than you, so things can be very complicated. There's more than you. There are so much diversity of preference and different way of doing things. So it can be very complicated. And sometimes the suffering is not caused by you yourself, but by maybe the one next to you. No, 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 no. Could be me, all right? So I want you to look at Jeremiah, the crying prophet. Uh, the ministry of Jeremiah was about 40 years during... Uh, before and after the exile of the Babylonian Empire. So, for 40 years, what did Jeremiah do? He preached to a people that is so far away from God. He preached to a group of people that turned away, turned their back on God. He preached to a stiff-necked generation. He preached to a backslided people, the Israelite, the Jew. You talk about discouragement. Every day, 40 years, preaching, crying, interceding, praying for the people. What result? What result? What increase? What multiplication did Jeremiah see? No. Nothing visible to him that is worth celebrating. What he could see is discouragement and disappointment. People, that is also part of working with God. So, are you willing to work with God? Are we willing to work with God today? Even though we may not see the intended result that we all hope to see. Not everyone will accept that message. Not everyone will appreciate you. You will feel lonely. You will feel scary. You will be afraid. You will feel intimidated at times. But are you willing to work with God? Uh, shall we all stand? I want you to look at the ministry of Stephen. The ministry of Stephen was not very long. It, it was very brief. Before he was stoned to death, what he had done for the Lord was very significant. Stephen worked with the Lord. You see, before he was stoned to death, he prayed a prayer, forgive them, you know, for they know you not. Forgive those that persecuted and stoned me to death. And that included the Apostle Paul. Because of that prayer, 
You see, when, when Stephen was arrested, when he was put up front to be stoned to death, do you think Stephen start to calculate? Okay, after all this sacrifice, how many souls can I win? No. I just simply obey. God, I just speak what you want me to speak. He simply speak the gospel and the result is death. You see, Stephen, he was not looking at whatever he had in mind. Maybe he do not have any of that in mind. He's not looking at increase or multiplication. I just obey. I'm working with God. You want me to preach? Okay, I preach right now. And the result definitely was unintended for most people. He was stoned to death. And Stephen said, forgive them. Because Stephen worked with God, we have a Paul. And because we have Paul and God have used him, God worked with Paul or Paul worked with God, they have founded many churches. Likewise, when we work with God, things is going to happen. In closing, I want to turn to your attention to Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. All right? The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. So, God has given us an invitation this morning. I want to work with you. So, God is asking us this morning, are you willing to go forth? Are you willing to make that step of faith forward to be my witness, to be a testimony? And I will work with you. Even right now, I want to invite the musician and everyone eyes closed. If it is a decision, yeah. and if we want to respond to the word of God this morning, if it is a decision, if you are willing, if you are not ready, that's fine. If you are ready, if you are willing to work with Him, can we have a hand raise if you are willing to work with Him, regardless of the circumstances? Yeah. Yeah. Not looking at the result. This is not a transaction. We are not working for God. We are working with God. He wants to work with you. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, right now we come before you, Lord Jesus. Father, you see every hand raised, Lord Father. You see the open hearts and willing heart of your people, Lord Father. We thank you, Lord Father, for the honour and invitation that you have given us, Lord Father. That we can work with the Almighty, the one that has given us life the one that created heaven and earth, Lord. Father, we have difficulties, we have challenges in life, but this morning we choose, Lord, Father, to follow your call. I want to work with you, Lord. It's not for what I could gain from it, but I call it and privilege to work with you, Lord, Father. For you will never leave us nor forsake us, Lord, that I can work with you, Lord, Father. I pray, Lord Father, help our unbelief, Lord Father. Give us a miracle heart and mind, Lord Father. And give us a miracle vision from above, Lord Father. That even in times of difficulties, pain and sorrow, that we will look at things from a kingdom perspective, Lord Father. That we are not only focus on ourselves, but Father, it's all about your kingdom, Lord Father. Give us that heart to believe, that heart to forgive, and that heart to receive your calling, Lord. I pray, Father, for your boldness upon each and every one of us, Lord. For those that make the decision, Lord, Father, to work with you, Lord. I pray for that boldness, Lord, Father. For we will face opposition. We will be misunderstood. But Father, I choose to work with you, Lord Father. I thank you, Lord Father, for your love, Lord Father. I thank you, Lord Father, that you count us worthy, Lord Father, to want to work with us, Lord. I pray, Lord Father, for your grace, for your peace, for your strength, Lord Father. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let us not lose the joy of salvation, Lord Father. Let us not 
be weary of doing good, Lord Father. It's not working for ourselves, it's not working for you, but working with you, follow your leading day by day, step by step, Lord. That we will not go before you, Lord Father, but we will stay close to you, Lord Father. I also want to pray for those that are not ready, those that have doubt in their mind, Lord Father, that we may have the understanding, we may experience your love, Lord, that we will find purpose in you, Lord Father, that we will discover our identity in you, Lord Father, that we will truly, Lord Father, enjoy the life that you have promised, Lord, even as we find our purpose, our destiny in you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, in your presence, God, here we are, Lord. God, we just want to go past the gates of praise right into the Holy of Holies, God, into your presence, God. Hallelujah, God. As I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary, to a standing faith, to face I look upon the countenance I see the fullness of your grace I can only bow down and say you are awesome in this place mighty God you are Awesome in this place, Abba Father, you are worthy of our praise. To you, our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. As I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary, till we're standing face to face. I look upon, I look upon your countenance, I see the fullness of your grace, I can only bow down. And say, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome, God. Sing it to God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Caleb, for sharing that very, very powerful message, working with God. Maybe you're here today and maybe you say, well, I'm not like Pastor Caleb. I'm not a missionary. I'm not someone who is ministering to people directly. I'm not like some of these worship team members. I'm not church staff I'm not not really this may not really apply to me but but all of us are working to see God in our situations we want God in our families we want our children to be raised up to love God to be respectful to be the best children possible we want them to be successful we're working in our workplaces we want to 
see God right there in our workplaces, helping us to do that work well and making an impact on people's life. We work hard in many situations and we want God in our families, our extended families, the friends that we have. We want God there. And today, God just wants to remind us that we can work with God in that process. God doesn't have to be outside it. God can work with us. You want to see something accomplished. God wants to work with us. And maybe you're here today and you feel discouraged because you've tried to do what is right and have God in that picture. But it doesn't seem that the results seem to show that it's going the right way. It's not getting the kind of results you expected or hoped for. And maybe you're a little disappointed when you are here in this service. Maybe you've been very active in ministry and serving and helping people, trying to do all you can to bring people closer to God, but it doesn't seem like people are coming closer to God and you feel discouraged. Today, we want to come before the Lord and be transparent before Him and say, Jesus, I come to you again, God. Maybe our motivation is, but the Caleb told us here today was, was based on certain kind of results that we hoped for and we expected and, and we wanted to have. Maybe we feel this whole process that God seemed to have forgotten us, but God is in the picture. And today we need God to come and help us to see. You know what, sometimes it's, it's, it feels like we're alone. We're like, like the prophet and we feel that we're alone, but God wants us to know that He is w with us and the people of God with us. And so if you're here today in this place and you're saying, God, encourage me. I need some encouragement from heaven. I need to see, God, Lord, you in this big picture. I need to know and sense, God, that you are working with me. I want you to put up your hands to God. Just a sign to heaven. I need Jesus. God, you see all of us, God, Lord, we're reaching out, Jesus. God, needing encouragement, needing strength, needing, God, Lord, extra, God, Lord, a direction from you, Jesus. Acknowledge that you're in this picture. You are in the work that we do in our families. You're in the work that we do in our workplaces. You're in the work that we do in our schools, wherever we are with our friends. You are there, Jesus. I pray, God, Lord, would you begin to show us a new picture. I pray, God, Lord, the lack of results, God, Lord, in what we set out to do is not accomplished yet. But God, here today, Jesus, Open our eyes to see that you are sovereign. You're in charge, God. You are working a work. We may not see it. We may not think it's happening, but you truly are working. I pray for my brothers and sisters, those who are discouraged, those who are feeling down. I pray, would you come right there? Would you come and would you give them a new level of encouragement? Would you come and show them, God, Lord, confidence? You are there. You are in this. You are in these family situations. You are in these workplace situations. You you are performing your work even though I don't see it. Yes, you are still working it, Jesus. So God, I pray, would you come, God? Would you show us a new picture, God? Lord, would you begin to help us to see, Jesus? Help us to see, God. Help us to see, God. Help us to see, church. I want to worship you and lead us in song again, but would you reach out to somebody around you for a few minutes? Would you turn to somebody and, and maybe they're discouraged? You don't know. You have no idea. But, but they need you to pray with them so won't you turn around to pray with somebody and let's just pray as we link hands with people around us let's pray today that God would come and we will see Jesus right there with us everybody we're here today trying to accomplish something trying to do something wherever we are in life you're trying to do something but let's just see Jesus in that situation let's see Jesus come in right there he is with us maybe some of you are having hard times in your workplaces it seems so much of a drudgery so much of a pain so much of a pressure but today Jesus wants to get into your work situation he wants to come into the work that you do with your family he wants to get right there with you so would you reach out to him would you just believe it church would you find somebody and reach out to them all in this house uh, encourage i pray for those who are feeling down who are feeling trouble right here today jesus would you stretch forth your hand jesus would you do a work jesus would you come alongside us jesus would you come show your power show your grace show your might god in jesus name in jesus name Awesome, awesome God, you are awesome in this place, mighty. 
situation, whether that's at home, God, God, whether at workplace, God, whether in school, God, whether with our loved ones, God, God, whether we're asking for direction, God, God, whether we're living, God, for a breakthrough in our health, God, whether believing for a breakthrough in finances, Jesus, God, you're here, Lord, God, because we walk with you, Jesus, God, because we are with you, God, God, because you are with us, Jesus, oh God, hallelujah, shalabah, hakadiyah, Jesus, God, we purpose, God. God, not only this day after this prayer, God, we feel good, but Lord, every day, oh God. God, we want to be in your presence, God. God, we want to hear your voice, God. God, let this be a start, Lord God. God, let this prayer, God, as we pray for each other, be a start, Lord Jesus. Every day, as we purpose to walk with you, God, just like the prophets of the old, God, just like even the prophets, oh God, in the New Testament, the deacons, oh God, God, those who are filled with the Spirit, God, they choose to walk with you daily, God. God, not only on Sunday, God, not only when we have sung, not only when we see each other, but God, they choose to walk with you. God, even in, in, the, in the secret place of prayer, God, they choose to listen to your voice, God. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Father, we thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, God, we raise our hands, God. Once again, God, we believe in you, Jesus, God. For every prayer that's been prayed this morning, hallelujah, Jesus hears them, hallelujah. And God, 
will answer them in due time. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because we have a living God. And God, because we want to echo, God, we want to declare you still move the mountains, God. You still raise the dead in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 